we've got a couple of things. Um, these are the feet that were taken off Cat Dancer, um, the horse that had to be put down because she had such severe laminitis um, and the owner was just not able to do a rehab on her. And uh, I, don't, I don't quite know how to start because um, I haven't done any videos for a while and um, I've kind of hit some low spots where I had some setbacks with uh, my own horses and some of the horses I do and uh, just wasn't understanding a few things and then it was like uh, in the last couple of weeks all these pieces to a puzzle just came together and I started getting these wonderful results and really I really started understanding what is going on with these hooves when these horses have problems, what's going on internally? That's why in the video, I really wanted you to uh, focus and keep in memory a couple of very important things. One is, and so one thing I really wanted you to focus on was the coronary band here, the shape, the slope of the coronary band from which the, the hoof wall grows. Another thing, how this coronary band is what they call vascular, vascularized and heavily vascularized and how um, it deals with what's called in the body microcirculation and how the coronary band, which comes from the Latin word meaning crown, basically is supposed to just rest at the top of the foot here, at the top of the hoof wall, like a crown. Um, so the coronary band is just supposed to rest, as I said in the picture here, at the top of the foot, like a crown. It crowns the hoof, hoof wall. Now this is a piece of hoof right here. Okay. You see how on the inner structure right here, there's a, a little dish. That's where this, okay, right there, that coronary band, the hoof wall, it rests in here. And I want you to notice here that the top of this is very pointed and sharp, very sharp. Okay, something I want to wanted you to focus on, there's two main things to focus on. One is the blood supply and circulation of the equine hoof, especially that that lays up here in the coronary band. Because without going through the coronary band, it never gets to the hoof itself. Now, in biophysics, they say that um, this deals with what with what you call microcirculation. Okay. Now, depending on what's going on, whether the horse is running or whatever, these little arteries and veins, whatever they're called, it said they have the ability to change caliber. Okay. That means caliber is what you call like bullets. Like you have a 22 shell. And you have a 30 out six, you know, or a 357 Magnum, you know. That means they are bigger around. These veins and arteries, this blood supply right in here, Mike. You know, when something has microcirculation, <clears throat> it has the ability to change its diameter and size, its caliber. So it might be little teeny tiny like that, but given the right circumstance, like the horse is running. Okay, it has the ability to open up like that to get more blood flow into the hoof. Okay, now you might be interested to know that uh, uh, you see advertisements on television all the time that uh, are trying to sell products to improve microcirculation. And this has to do with what you call male enhancement. You know, I'm telling you this because 
Uh, that might give you a general idea of what microcirculation micro does, okay, and how important it is. Obviously, they sell a lot of Viagra, and uh, they're also learning that the same things that they put in these male enhancement uh, vitamins and stuff, okay, they're, they're putting in horse products to increase the circulation of the hoof, like, uh, was it nitric oxide, I believe I read off. So I want you to keep in mind, whenever you think of that coronary band, blood supply to the hoof. The second thing I want you to keep in mind is the basic, see, this is what you call a plasticized cast of the veins of the horse's hoof. Um, what they've done is they've taken and they've injected plastic into the veins and then they have slowly peeled away the tissue to reveal just the venous structure, the blood vessels and stuff. Okay, I want you to really burn into your mind the shape, the form, the image, the angles, the length of the heel, the length of the toe, how um, the coronary band just kind of crowns the top of this the hoof wall like this. This is how the horse's foot should look on the exterior as well as the interior. But what I'm going to show you is how when things start to go wrong the horse's hoof can take a very different shape. But if we can keep this shape burned in our minds and understand a few things about how the horse's hoof got deformed, how he got problems, um, we'll be able to fix it and give him a healthy, very healthy hoof that he was meant to have. So keep that shape burned in your mind. Okay, now here's another picture, okay, that has the tissue included. Okay, again, it's the same shape. That is what every single horse, that is the basic shape of what every hoof on every horse, regardless of breed, should look like. I don't care if he's a thoroughbred, you know, I've got a horse that's a thoroughbred. Okay, what they say, the problems that horses have, okay, are not due to the horse, it's due to uh, lack of lack of care, lack of trimming, or uh, the fact that people trim wrong. Men have been holding on to traditions that are an error and they have been trimming wrong and they do not see the truth of this structure right here that all they're doing is keeping this structure encased in a hoof capsule. So our hoof capsule has to just hold in gently the structure, this structure right here from the coronary band down. Now it's good to know about all oh, the bones, P3, da 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 da. But in the long run, if you don't burn this shape into your brain and understand the importance of this coronary band, okay, you're not going to understand how to trim and how to help your horse. Okay, now we're going to take a look at Cat Dancer's hooves, and I, I'm going to explain something, you know, I, I, that I did, probably didn't really see even at the time. And um, now I've been taught, and I've read some stuff about paying attention to the coronary band right here. Let's look at a back hoof. Paying attention to the coronary band that runs around the hoof. Okay, and if it's uh, jammed up a little here, well then you can relieve some quarter to help it drop down. But sometimes the whole thing gets jammed up. Now again, keeping this as our model, that the coronary band is just supposed to lay at a nice 30 degree arc along here. Inside the rim of that hoof wall. Okay, and then that 
everything that grows down from it grows down in straight alignment with this right here. This is how the hoof should look. Now, let's take a look at Cat Dancers and see what happened to her. Okay, can you get up close there, Leah? Yep. Okay, what you're going to find happens is that when horses do not get trimmed right, as the hoof wall grows out to the ground and, and uh, the horse is walking and there's a lot of pressure on it, it starts to jam this coronary band here. Okay, the hoof wall grows out to the ground. When it gets too long and the horse is not trimmed, okay, then that growth has to go somewhere. Unfortunately, it starts growing, going back up this way, like this. And as it does, it takes the coronary band with it. Let's see right here, to where the coronary band gets shoved up into here. You see? So, this is what happened to Cat Dancer long before she ever foundered on grass. She was trimmed wrong, and uh, in shoeing schools, they don't teach them much about the hairline. What happened here is, as this hoof wall grows up and shoves up this way, it takes and it pushes all that soft tissue up like this. You can feel a ridge here, okay? And it just pushes the bulb and all this stuff right in here. Let me see, let me show you here. Okay, well this pushes up, then it pushes all that's above it, all the lateral cartilage and everything else. It just shoves it up. Now, it can do it on one side, or it can do it on both sides. It can do it all the way around the hoof. And it happened really bad to Cat Dancer. Now, her, this coronary band is shoved up into here. Okay, the hoof wall got shoved up this way and grew up and was shoved up this way. And you see that she's got, right here, well, my marker works. She's got this much hoof wall that instead of growing out through and down to the ground and being trimmed off or, you know, worn off if she'd have been out on the desert somewhere, she could have <coughs> wore it off herself. Because the farrier, whatever farrier they had doing her, did not recognize or understand this. And I'm not getting on farriers. I'm saying they don't really teach about this in farrier school, in fact. Uh, uh, a lot, even a, there are even barefoot trimmers that don't realize this, that don't know how to recognize when this coronary band and the, when the wall has grown up and pushed the coronary band up. Okay? Now, if her foot would have been right, okay, all these tissues in here, okay, would be setting down here. Down here. 